Uh, let's take a look at the hardware used first. The server side uses ESP32 TTGO. I'm gonna draw a waveform on the built-in display on the TTGO model. Uh, for drawing a graph, we need a display, so I choose this model for this project. Uh, the ESP32 has a built-in DAC, but it's difficult to connect directly to the speaker. So it's using the MAX uh, 983578D diesel to analog converter, which converts I2S audio to analog signal to drive speakers. You can use any GPIO pins for the I2S because there are no dedicated pins for the I2S interface. Uh, in my case, pin 12 is connected to specify the left and right channels. Uh, the bit clock input on pin 13 and the serial data input on pin 15 is connected. The default gain is 9 decibel and can be up to 15 decibel when 100k ohm resistance is connected to the ground. Uh, the SD for shutdown and channel selection is not connected. Uh, as you can see here, the speaker used a very small speaker. It's only a 1 watt speaker with 80 ohms. I choose this because I wanted to test a speaker this size. Uh, if possible, I'd like to use this speaker for the next project too. Uh, now let's take a look at the client side. It's much simpler than the server side. The ESP32 is simply connected with the INMP441 ITS MAPS microphone. Uh, this can also be connected to any pins of GPIO. Uh, there is nothing connected to left right pin because it uses only the left channel of the microphone. The remaining pins, a serial data clock, or word selection, and serial data output are all needed, so please connect them. Uh, I wired it using slightly longer wires. The reason is to hide this ESP32 body part radar and install the microphone out. Uh, it's not important, so please wire it as you like. Uh, there is a source code that I load on the screen. Uh, the client code on the left and the server code on the right. Uh, first, let's look at the client side source code. Uh, when Wi-Fi and the WebSocket are connected, the client continues to send data that came through ITS to the server. Uh, when disconnected from the server, an event callback occurs on the WebSocket where ESP32 is restarted. Uh, in fact, restarting is not a good solution. However, since the connected Wi-Fi often has a problem that doesn't cut off properly, so I have forced it to restart. Uh, let's talk about ITS settings for INMP441. I use 16K Hz for sampling rate, 32 bit for bit depth, and only one channel. Uh, these three information calculate the number of bits to be proceed per second. 16K by 32 bit by one channel makes uh, 512,000 bits. It will be 512 kbps. Uh, the number of DMA buffers is 32, and the length of the each buffer is set to 64, and this is not a byte. Uh, the buffer read at a time by I2S is set to 1024 bytes. Adjust the data that came through the ADC scale for some filters rather than uh, sending the read buffer directly to the server. This allows you to reduce or increase the overall volume including noise. Adjusting these values depending on your environment can help you get better data. Uh, finally, it's time to send a value to the server. Uh, the client's work is done with this. Uh, let's look at the server side now. Uh, after Wi-Fi AP mode is started, the WebSocket server is started. Uh, after that, draw the screen that everything is ready. Uh, the server task starts right away, uh, where it keeps checking to see if there are any clients connected and if they are disconnected. Uh, the WebSocket client has a callback to verify that the connection is alive, but the server side needs to check with ping pong to see if the client is still alive. Uh, this system continues to receive data once it's connected to the client, so if the data doesn't come in within 0.5 seconds, it may be considered the client disconnected. The ITS settings has the same sampling rate, bit depth, and channel as the client. Uh, let me go to the root function. Uh, after connecting the client, uh, data from the client is written to I2S. Then to draw a graph on the screen, I'll replace the value of the 32-bit with a signed 32-bit integer. Uh, 
Uh, since the third is MSB and the zeroth is the LSB, uh, it can be converted through bit operations. Uh, then this sample value can be expressed as a graph of the waveform that we often see. Uh, also, because it's a 32 bit integer type so that the value is large, uh, I reduced the range and adjusted it to the fit the screen height through the map. Uh, when the client is connected, the task to draw the graph begins. Among the different methods of the drawing graphs, the graph was displayed using sprite. Uh, with sprite, you can easily represent graphs by moving the sprite itself without refreshing the entire screen. Uh, this is a really good way. Uh, here, I use the global variable to draw a line on the sprite, uh, but this is not a good idea. At first, I tried to receive and draw data using the queue of the free R2S, but I couldn't process it all the way because too much data came out. Uh, so I simply drew to grab the values that I updated with one variable. Uh, finally, if the client is no longer sending data, I'll remove the task to draw the graph and then install the ITS driver and then show the ready screen again. Uh, this is the older process of the server side. Let me show you the result. If we put the power on the server first, you will see the ready screen. This means that the server is waiting for a client's connection. Uh, then when you power the client, it connects immediately. Uh, now the distance between the microphone and the speaker is too close that the feedback phenomenon occurs that the sounds keep going around. So testing is not possible at a close distance. Uh, for now, I will just check that the graph is drawn properly. Uh, when the connected client disconnects, it goes back to the preparation screen and waiting again. Uh, for fun, uh, let me put client equipment in a box that looks like a book. Uh, I'm not trying to fool anyone, I'm just trying to do it for fun. Uh, I've never found anybody that didn't want to help me if I asked them for help. I always call up, I call up, um, this will date me, but I call up Bill Hewlett when I was 12 years old. And he lived in Palo Alto, his number was still in the phone book. And he answered the phone himself. He said, yes. He said, hi, I'm Steve Jobs. I'm 12 years old. I, I'm a, a student in high school, and I want to build a frequency counter. And I was wondering if you had any spare parts I could have. And he laughed, and he, he gave me the spare parts to build this frequency counter, and he gave me a job that summer in Hewlett Packard, working on the assembly line, putting nuts and bolts together on frequency counters. He got me a job in a place to build them. And I was in heaven. And I've never found anyone who said no or hung up the phone when I called. I just asked. And when people ask me, I try to be as responsive, you know, to pay that, that debt of gratitude back. Um, Most people never pick up the phone and call. Most people never ask. And that's what separates sometimes the people that do things from 